NBA Draft Lottery is tomorrow. We all know the percentages, but to get a better understanding of the math, we went to Columbia University to speak with Professor Ivan Corwin to give us a tutorial. Now, this is By the Numbers, presented by the New York Lottery. Good morning, and welcome to NBA Draft 101. I'm Professor Corwin, and our first lecture today will be about the lottery. Before we start, are there any questions from the class? Yeah, you with the sweaty armpits. Professor Corwin, I, I got to be honest, math really makes me nervous, and the whole process of this lottery makes me nervous. And obviously, I'm really nervous about how the Knicks are going to slot in the draft lottery, really hoping that they get the number one overall pick. Can you explain how all of this works? Sure. I'd be glad to explain it to you. I'll walk you through it. In order to understand it, we first need to know how they choose which team gets the different picks. So the way that the first pick and the subsequent picks are chosen is that there's a bin of numbers, 1 through 14, and you randomly pull out four numbers from that bin. Let's say that you get 9, 4, 13, 2. You need to ask the question, how many possible different uh, outcomes are there? And very simple formula multiplying these numbers gives us that there's 1,001 possible distinct outcomes. Now, what happens is to each of those outcomes, except one actually, you assign a team. So the Knicks get 14% of the outcomes, the Cavs, who were second worst, and the Suns also get 14 outcomes, all the way down to the 14th worst team, which only gets one outcome. Professor, is there anything the Knicks can do to alter the probability for them getting the number one pick? Absolutely not. The, the most that they can do is temper their expectations and understand the probabilities and how that changed between last year and this year. What we really care about, however, is the overall chance that they get first, second, third, fourth, or fifth pick. So, what you see here from this calculation is that it's roughly the same between the first through the fourth. And the fifth pick, they have about a 48% chance. So if I was a betting man, which I'm not, I would say that they're probably going to get the fifth pick. Under this year's system, the average outcome is going to be about 3.5. So they're going to get somewhere between the third and the fourth pick on average. That, and under the previous system, they would have gotten somewhere between the second and third on average. Professor, can you relate the probability of the Knicks getting the number one overall draft pick to something else that New Yorkers might be able to relate to? Because this is, this is tough to understand. Sure, sure. So 14% chance, let's say this is the chance that right when you get there, the subway is pulling away. So it's a reasonable chance. You experience this about one out of sev every seven no, it days. It seems to me whenever I have to get the subway, it's pulling away. I, no. I think it's a greater probability than 14%. <laughs> okay, so it's not that complicated. Do you got it? Got it. <laughs> I don't have it. Do you guys have it? <laughs> Suffice it to say, it's very complicated. I, I think he said it best. Temper the expectations. Yeah. I think that was one of the funniest Yeah, I don't lines. feel better about that at all. Like, it's all probability. I don't it's want to know math. the math now. That's I mean, too much information. It, right it's a Bring your rabbit's how... foot. Bring your wear your lucky socks. <laughs> yeah. you know, and hopefully you, get, you have a 14 out of 100 chance to get the number one pick yeah. if there were 100 balls. That's how you look at right. it. All right. And so 52% chance of a top four pick, 48% chance of the fifth pick. And that's the bottom line. Yeah. So it's a little bit, be bit better than 50-50 you know, to get a top four. The percentages to get a top three, which is what the Knicks are really looking for, either John Morant, Barrett, or Zion would be my top three. That's about 40% chance. That's four out of ten. That's pretty good. Uh, but we're going for well, the big one. We're going we, for Zion. We're going. We also added probability of how long it's been since the Knicks. That doesn't matter. The History has nothing to do oh, with I when these lottery does. balls are just does. bouncing around. These are useless stats. As we know, guaranteed top five pick. All right, that's the fifth time in the last 40 years. The second time in the last 30, they will have a top five. That's a big deal right there yeah. alone, okay? Now look, top five picks, they've done pretty well. As you can see in their history, some pretty good players on there, including, of course, Walt Clyde Frazier, Patrick Ewing, Hall of Famers there. So that's all good to see, right? That, that you can still get a good player if you're in the top five. Yeah. And I think that's the most important part of the conversation is no matter what, a top five pick still has a lot of value. You want number one, or maybe even number two, but still top five, there's a lot of value. But, but know, every draft is different. Yes, you're okay? right. Okay? I mean, remember when LeBron James was one? 
And then uh, who was two? It was yeah, um, amazingly Cleveland won that. Yeah, it Isn't was that incredible. <laughs> and then also uh, Carmelo Anthony was in that draft. Chris Paul was in the draft. So, draft classes. In exactly, it, yeah. right? You know, Chris Bosh was in there. Uh, yeah. D Wade. Mm -hmm. Darko Milicic was, was number left. two. Pick, right? So you, you just what? never know from year you to year. You guys are the players, right? Yeah. At an elite level, you never know. The, the, the immediate reaction is going to be if it's a fifth pick. Oh no! But you know. Who knows how this is all going to work out, right? Well, it's me, not going to be Zion Williamson or John Morant. We yeah. can almost tell that for sure, that those right twin, mm -hmm. we've been watching them all year, college basketball, those two guys are the guys you want mm -hmm. that are going to translate into NBA surefire all-stars, in my opinion. But also, I think one of the things Knicks fans have to keep in mind is the bigger picture and how, I mean, you have this canvas right now that's being painted, you know, brush by brush. And what I mean by that is, yeah, the draft is coming. If you don't get the number one pick, you're still in a position, can the organization go out? You still have free agency to look at. Are they still building? And so even if, let's say, they got a top four pick and it's not one or two and you get three or four, you're going to get a solid player that can Definitely. contribute to the team. Um, but I think the problem with all these high expectations of that number one and people just saying we have to get Zion because we lost so many games, they're not looking at the, the math. way the yeah. math <laughs> goes. And that's the the math. Thing. How would you do football? Yeah. I'd love to see you take a class from uh, Professor. A quote. I think that would go really well. He would yell in the middle of class, useless stats. He would just scream. Oh, I understand analytics. I understand math. I understand percentages. Right. I, you, know, you, want it, you want guys that when they raise up and they shoot the basketball, they make half their shots That'd or more. Great. That would be yeah. nice. Not 38% like yeah. some guys that the yep. you know, Knicks True. have had in the last couple of years. So okay. that's the bottom line. But Zion is just such a surefire thing compared to like you alluded to, Swin, we're going to get a good player, one to five. It doesn't matter. But when you have that player and that, you know, elite player and that, you know, next coming of a, of a Lebr LeBron James type talent, you you just want to get lucky once. Just get, you know, 14 out well, of 100 chance. Just pick the right there, ping pong balls. That's what you're saying. What you can't quantify is the emotion. Yeah. Mm. And that and yes. when you hit on that, it's, it's the fact that it's, it's not necessarily what the probability is. It's more or less the feeling of... If you win the lottery, what it means, it yes. can feel like momentum. Yes. It provides that. It so that's where a lot of hope is in that. And like I said, they've been in the lottery. This is the 13th time since 2002 the team yep. has been in the lottery. They've never won it. Ever. Like, how is that possible? But this, that doesn't affect this lottery because it's completely different. It does in my book. There you go. Good job. That's a good math theory right there. Nice work.